in my last video, I went over everything showing you about my whole work on Linux. And if I'm being honest, that video was recorded almost a month ago at this point, and so many things have changed. And as you can click this video, I'm sure reading the title, you can see I've switched to Qtile. So I wanted to take this video to reflect my thoughts on Qtile, why I switched, all I missed with DWM, and all of that fun stuff. First of all, I want to quickly talk about my window manager journey. I started off with i3, was i3 for like two years or so, quite a while, but i3 was the original reason I switched to Linux. But, you know, I got i3 when I was hooked and everything else Linux offered compared to my Mac. And when I switched to DWM, and I've been happy on DWM for the past 10 months, but the constant patching, having to restart, and so many more issues just annoyed me so much, I decided to, well, jump ship to Qtile, as I've heard lots of good things about Qtile. So, let's talk about what I like about Qtile. One of the biggest things I like about Qtile is the way it handles workspaces compared to something like DWM. The way workspaces work on DWM is each monitor has its own separate nine workspaces, yet on Qtile each monitor shares, well, nine or however many workspaces you want. It's nine out of the box, you can change how many you want, I have ten, because I do like to have, so normally I have stuff on one, two, three, four, five, and eight, so I like to have six, seven, nine, ten, at least open for options for stuff I want to put down. But let me show you how workspaces work, as it's really nice on here. As you can see here, we have our desktop open, and this window on workspace number 3 is it's highlighted up here. Our other monitors on workspace number 10. But, so here's the cool thing. So right now, workspace number 3 here, you've got the same monitor, but I'm going to switch, I'm going to use my keybind to switch to workspace number 10. So if I press my keybind, which is super zero, this is what was on my other screen, as you can see it's basically swapped, and workspace number three, that was on my main screen, has gone to the screen over here, which you can't see, and we can swap it around again. Really weird to me at first, but once I got used to it, it was really hard to go back to something like how DWM works, as this just makes so much more sense of a multi-monitor workflow. I do have some keyboard shortcuts, you know, to move the window between each different screen, but I don't really find myself using it that much, to be honest, as the way workspaces work is great. Although, due to my weird keyboard layout, I had had some issues at Workspace to show how I solved that. So, the keyboard layout I use is a custom Dvorak layout made by the Prime Engine. As you can see up here, when I'm not pressing Shift, the keys in the home row, well, top row, are not 1, 2, 3, 4, they are, sorry, I was pressing Shift there, they're these. And issue is, it's the same with DWM, I had problems at first switching workspaces with these keys. So, what I've had to do is, let me show you, let's open up my Qtile config. So, I've had to do, so I've basically created a little hash table over here. All I'm saying is you find this in the default config, this bit, this highlighted bit, and all this is saying is for iron groups, basically for each group, we're going to use mod plus whatever key to switch to that workspace. So all that's happening is it's basically going to look through here, so it's going to say, let's say over here it says key to use, which is that hash table. So let's say the workspace name is workspace 9, it's going to say, ah, oh, 9 should be assigned to plus. So 9 plus will move to the first workspace, or shift, shift 1 plus, or like, so, or so let's do like shift 1 bracket left, we'll move this to the second, shift 3, if that will make sense, it just kind of tells it how to move around, which solves the issues, basically. As we're already here, I'll show you another great thing I love, the config, this is very simple to understand, because this is just Python, which, and I know Python quite well, it's quite easy to understand, so I've named split the config. So as you can see over here, this is like the main where everything gets done. And I have a groups. These are like all my different groups. You know, I can define different layouts for each thing. I only really use Mona tool, which is the master and stack. But I do also have the max layout. Sometimes I want to max. And then I also can, although full screen, but then because I have transparency, it gets funny. So I like to keep around the max layout. Sometimes that can be useful. And then the keys, this is just to find my key bindings. More on that in a minute. And then screens, this is just my bar at the top, which is quite nice. The bar can be transparent by default. So over here, we're basically saying go from 777 to 555 transparency. Let me give you an example. So if I set this to FF, you'll be able to see. If I read it in my config, you can see. It's got like a little gradient going on there, which I quite like. I have a very subtle one going on. And then all of these are just kind of shell scripts. I know there's like, you know, built-in stuff into Qtile to do it all. 
but I like using a lot of my custom shower scripts except the volume on this. This is um, the default QTAR volume because of, I couldn't find a way to make update my volume on Pico with the arrow keys, or, sorry, my volume change keys. But the rest of these are all my custom scripts. What I do like too is it's very easy to add clickable actions. So, for example, if I click this over here, I can now, you know, change the network or, you know, click this, a nice little weather report or whatever. So, it's quite nice. I do like how you can do that. It's back to the keyboard section, which I was just going on about. One of the greatest things that QTARS offers is a thing called key chords. It's very similar to an Emacs. So, you can press like Control X, Control C to access. I'm pretty sure that's the default accent in GNU Emacs. Anyways, sometimes when you're not using key chords, eventually when you have a lot of key maps like I do, you'll start to run out of keys. Key chords prevent that issue, so let me show you how they work. So over here, we can see everything going on. This is the key maps in my QTile config. So let's say I want to control my aircon. Well, I press mod A, O. That's basically going to activate this toggle over here, or be a visual thing to be able to see. So mod A, so mod A, N. You can see that there, mod AF, or like, look, alt L, L. You can see those lights, you know, mod L, sorry, alt L, T. You can see this, whatever. There's lots of different things, or like, sort of like these over here. These are all like different D menu prompts I have. So that like, that's like, you know, your normal D menu, or like, mod P, E. You get a little thing, nice stuff over here. It's just me to edit a config. I like mod PM as an example. I could change this, whatever. As you can see, there's lots of possibilities here, and you can even add like different mod. It doesn't have to be mod, it could be control, or I could do like over here, as you can see. I have like mod P shifty, which would then you take, it gives it a second. I don't know why it takes. Did I do it. There you go, mod P shifty. Don't know why it's taking so long to load. There you go. Or I can select an emoji or whatever. So. Copy that emoji and whatever. So it's quite nice though, key quarters. You don't run out of key binds, but you will eventually. But it takes a lot longer to run out of key binds than you would with something like DWM. Although, with DWM, you can actually get a patch to your key code. So, I do decide to go back to DWM to clean up my config or whatever. I would definitely be installing the key code patch, as this is a lifesaver. One of the other great things about QTAL is the fact that there's zero patching. Because when you first install DWM out of the box, you know, you have to do a bunch of patching to get a lot of basic features in there. But QTAL, as it's not suckless, has all these features in by default. And of course, if you want to add features, it's Python. Python's very easy to understand. And know what you're doing, you can find ways to hack it into the config. It's not that hard as long as you know what you're doing. And while yes, you can't basically add anything you want with patches into DWM, that requires you knowing C. And once again, you can edit the source code of QTAL if you really want to, or mess with stuff in your Python config. As it, look, I'll show you. If you go over here to qtile.org, you go to their documentation. They have everything you need here. Like, I mean, like the DWM documentation is awful. I mean, look how much there is here. There's so much document, like, you know, we're going to go hacking on Qtile. And now we can see everything we need to know about, you know, messing around with stuff, adding new features for ourselves. And look, each one of these, I mean, there is so much here. And compared to something like DWM, you get so much more info. And then another thing that really annoyed me is every time I made a config, like, changed my config, like, even a simple keybind, I'd have to sudo make install DWM. And I'd have to key, well, so if you don't have the patch where you can kill DWM to restart it, You'd have to basically kill DWM and log back into your session, reopen everything, or you'd have to kill everything. You know, so I had a keybind, I'd be able to just renew DWM, which is basically send a kill command to DWM. But the issue was, um, all my windows would just go to one workspace, I'd have to move everything back to where it should be. It was just a pain. Qtile, one keybind, like most window managers, and it just reloads your config in like seconds. If I'm being honest, there really isn't a lot I miss from DWM. Like, at first I missed the way it managed workspaces, but now that I'm used to Qtile, it's been like a week or two. I just prefer the way Qtile works. It's so much nicer. And, well, at least for now, I think I'm going to stick to Qtile. Let's just feel nice. Also, there was supposed to be a video about my main Linux machine, my Lenovo laptop, but um, since I wrote that video, a lot has changed. So I've decided to scrap the current video and rewrite it all. So, yeah. I hope you've enjoyed this some more in-depth not really in depth, but let's look at how I'm using Qtile, why I switch from DWM, and well, my thoughts on window managers at the moment. You can, as per usual, find all my configs and my dot files with Qtile DWM if you really want it. All of my dot files, links down below. Oh, and I still do use ST, but thank you for watching. I hope you have a good day.